We told you. We told you. How could you ever doubt us? We slammed it. I told you. Paul Maurice, greatest coach ever. Winnipeg Jets, absolutely can completely win games getting out shot by 10 every time. Easy. We knew it. We knew the D pairings of Forbert Pionk. Woo! Jets win, baby! Welcome to the Worst Sports Channel on YouTube, Hawk Garbage Sports, with me, Coach Ryan D. What do you want? Who cares? Being wrong in this scenario, best feeling on the planet. Because I prefer a Jets win over being right every day of the week. And if you're going to sit there and tell me you were on the 10% of people that thought this was good, because I was in playoff pools, we were listening analysts, nobody had the Jets. Okay, not nobody, like 10 to 15% of you had the Jets. And on you guys, great job. But like, really, it's also a 50-50 coin flip. There's only two choices, but the Jets did it. And to the 10 to 15% of you that believed, good on you. You win this. Best feeling in the world. Best feeling in the world beating the Oilers game one. We needed to come into Edmonton and split this series. And 100%, we needed to take the first game because, geez, like the Jets just needed to believe. And you know what? They did. They did. We've talked about it on this channel before that every team going into a playoff game goes in confident and thinking they can win. The Jets and Paul Maurice were just that. And I cannot wait for you guys to go see the smirk on Paul Mo's face when he gets to talk about Dominic Tottenham. <laughs> I can say his name in full. And he just gets to sit there and go, yeah, Cole Perfetti who? Told ya. Tucker Pullman. Pylon. Plug. He told ya. Forbert and Pionk. DeMello and Morrissey. He told you. Real pros on the playoffs are a totally different game. What happened in the regular season doesn't matter. Well, Paul, it, it actually kind of does, but he told you whatever. Fantastic. Jets win. Vanquishing in one game. I mean, we still got a long way to go, but like, oh, I'm pumped up. You know what? Let's roll the intro. We'll come back with some analysis. Stick with us till the end, Jets fans. It's going to be a blast. Here's Lemieux. Okay, so we know that the Jets love milestones, and there were two big milestones coming in today. Number one, it was Carter Hellebuck's birthday. Happy birthday, Connor Charles Hellebuck, the greatest goaltender in the NHL. And even when we were, you know, not so impressed with the Jets, we never backed away from it. He is number one. It is not Vasilevsky. It is not it's not anybody. It's Hellebuck. I don't even, I'm not even going to go to the list. We're just fired up right now. But number two, the hockey gods, the omen, the sign, the whiteout comes to Edmonton. And no, I don't just mean the Winnipeg Jets whiteout. I mean, legit actual snow hit Edmonton in May, baby. And if that isn't a sign, I don't know what is. Let me ask you a quick question. How many games did the Jets win when it wasn't snowing outside? Well, I'm pretty sure they went one 11 and whatever, but they lost a lot because it was really nice weather in Winnipeg for a bit there. And how many games did the Jets win when it was snowing? Oh, I see what you did. Most of them. Yeah, there you go. Most of them. The Winnipeg Jets win in snow. Whatever. We'll take it. The fates, the gods, whatever you want to call it. Fantastic omen going into Edmonton. White out in full legitimate effect. So first off, let's go ahead and address. Are the playoffs a different game? Was this a different game on the outside looking in or a first glance, if you will, you might say, yes, the Jets laid the bod. Welcome to the Central Division, Oilers. <laughs> We've been dealing with this crap for a long time. So about time you took some bruises, you know, but are the playoffs a different game? I'm going to say yes and no. I'm going to say yes, because the playoffs are different. We know that. But why I'm going to say no is the Jets versus the Oilers in the regular season. This wasn't the same Winnipeg Jets team. I did not believe I've never seen it before. Now I've seen it. Great. Saw the first time in my life. I've never seen a team be able to turn a light switch and change like that. In the regular season against the Oilers, the Winnipeg Jets did two things wrong. Run around like a chicken with your head cut off throwing the bod everywhere, getting yourself out of position. You don't believe me? Go to sportsnet.ca or head to the Sportsnet YouTube channel and listen to Blake Wheeler's after game speech. He even calls it out and says that's what they were doing. 
But in this game, they hit when they needed to. Yes, it still ended up being 62 hits because the Jets are built for the Central Division to be big and tough, but they laid the hits at the right time and the most important thing happened. Somehow they learned how to forecheck and close the gap. I have been talking about this over and over and over again. The Jets forwards and the defenseman gap is trash. You have two, three forwards way, way too far down, way too low. You're giving up odd man rushes. How does Paul Maurice not see this? And like a light switch, it's like this team of wily vets figured it out and they were perfect. One, two, two or two, three, four checks. Kevin BX and I give a lot of crap to the Sportsnet guys pointed it out with one of the best segments I've ever seen after a game. I mean, thank goodness we got some really good analysis on it. He spent three minutes showing how a one, two, two, four check works. One guy down low and two guys above the puck. When two guys were down low, we moved to a two, three. The third guy joined the defenseman. We had rush after rush after rush with Edmonton. That was three on three, three jets, three Oilers, centermen, two defensemen, and they stood him up at the blue line. Oh, what a concept. Keep the gap. They kept the gap and it shut the transition game of the Oilers down. Unfreaking believable. And it's not unbelievable that an NHL team can do it. It's unbelievable that we got to watch 56 games and the Winnipeg Jets didn't do it all freaking year. And then all of a sudden they just decided, hey, oh yeah, we know how to play hockey. Why did they all of a sudden decide that? Why did they all of a sudden get disciplined? Why did Mark Shifley and Blake Wheeler all of a sudden get on the right side of the puck over and over again? Well, the only answer that I have is that they're a veteran team. And what veteran teams can do, we saw it with the Blues, we saw it with the Capitals on their cup run, we saw it previously, you know, a little longer ago, but with the Boston Bruins when they won their cup. Veteran players and the Winnipeg Jets aren't young. I mean, my brother was mind blown today. He's like, wow, I didn't really realize that Hellebuck's 28, Shifley's 27, 28. These guys are getting up there. Yeah, they're vets. They're in their prime now. This is the window. Is this team as good as the team that went to the conference final? No. Is this team smarter? Yes. And veteran teams normally are. So when St. Louis won it, we thought their window was over. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't because they played great hockey when the Capitals won it. There were many years the Capitals should have won the cup before they won the cup, not taking any thing away from their cup victory. It just wasn't the best Capitals team, but they were smarter. And now all of a sudden, here we are with the Winnipeg Jets, and maybe that is why they were able to flick the light switch. All right, now let's flick the switch ourselves and talk about the MVP, Connor Charles Hellebuck. Woo! That one's for you, Glenn. Connor Hellebuck did exactly what everybody said he needed to do and can do. He stole a game and he can steal a series. When you have the best goaltender in the NHL, he can go out and, and do amazing things. His save percentage was amazing. I think it was like a 9-6, like unfreaking believable. But it is very hard to score when you're the Edmonton Oilers when you don't get a second chance at that puck. And he gave very few, if any rebounds out today he tracked that puck that man's intensity was there and he took goals away from players that frankly should theoretically be goals that stop on Nugent Hopkins across the Royal Road money no problem he made it look easy and Connor Hellebuck is absolutely the franchise player on this team what a fantastic showing from him he's never played bad all year with the exception of one or two games where you know he looked shaky got pulled we've never been on him I haven't heard Jets fans be on him this year everybody thought he had a strong year but this was the next level so if he gets hot through the series he's only got to do it 15 more times he can absolutely do it and remember what I said in my Stanley Cup bet video the Jets were paying plus 2800 smash 100 bucks on the Jets get paid out like gangbusters look it's only one game but this team is built they have been built yeah they got weak deep but that goaltending can make up for it let's see if he can do it three more times Edmonton themselves played fine but they did not know what to do when there was no transition, as soon as the Jets played a proper forecheck and Connor Hellebuck took rebounds away, the problems with the Jets defensemen were covered up. Very easy to play one on ones all over the ice. We've said it before. Coaches told you this game is about two on ones. If you can create two on ones on offense or defense, not just carrying the puck, but if you can have two defenders on one puck carrier or at the very least one to ones, two on two, three on three, it always will end up going to the defenders. 
in order to be offensively gifted or be able to score offensively, you need to create two on ones and the Jets never let that happen. They always had numbers at every end of the ice, including the neutral zone. Then you end up shutting down the best player in the world because, well, I mean, you can only go through so many people at once, I guess. So, I mean, McDavid didn't even get a shot into uh, until the third period. That's that's mind blowing. They held dry sidle and McDavid to zero. We assumed for sure that they were going to be good for two every game. Hey, Paul Maurice got us. Fooled you, Ryan. Great job, coach. Great, great job. And hats off to the Jets at that. But once again, we got to talk about we got outshot badly. Let's take the win. We're not going to criticize anything here. We're taking the win. Just take it. Run away. Take it. You stole it. Wonderful. But getting outshot is interesting. The Jets have won plenty of games getting outshot all year, but like didn't see this one coming. Didn't see this one coming. Just as much as we didn't see the heroes of this game being Bullman, Stanley, and Tonino. Like, great. Great. I'm in. I am I think that's fantastic. All right. Let's talk about the D pairings and let's talk about the lineup as a whole. What an interesting choice for a lineup. No Ehlers, no Luke Dubois. So Veselainen gets in. We've been asking for Veselainen all year. He's a fantastic player. You bump him up to the second line. What? Why, why weren't you playing him all year? I guess it doesn't matter because he looked great. We all think he looks great. We want him in the lineup. Good job. I'm I'm flabbergasted. I'm just flabbergasted at the lineup. And it worked. If only we were doing that all year. Interesting. The D pairings, I'm really confused as to why it wasn't Morrissey and Pionk together. But the simple explanation could be the fact that it's very hard to get a line match against Connor McDavid because they are the home team. So they get the last change. So you make sure you have Morrissey or Pionk on McDavid. And let's talk about Pionk in Connor McDavid's face. Oh my goodness. Did he beat up Connor McDavid? Every chance he got hit him in his face, checked him. We have been talking about Neil Pionk as the guy to shut down McDavid and he did it. He drove him nuts. And that physicality of the Jets and the hits that the Jets laid, they were well-timed. They were proper. And again, talking about it with really good Jets fans and smart people of hockey, I think we could have predicted that the Jets were going to lay bod in the first two games. Even if you lose the first two games, if you beat the crap out of an opponent with physicality, you can wear them down in a seven game series and take game three. I'm just surprised that it worked so fast. And I'm very surprised that they made hits at the right time and were able to get on the right side of the puck and come back. So this is basically a flawless hockey game from the Winnipeg Jets. And it's not just because of the win. There is really nothing to criticize and break down in this game. Systematically, the coach coached them perfectly and they all executed all four lines. And the reason the depth guys ended up scoring is because ah, we've, we've said this. We have good depth on line three and four. I've been saying it all year. Our depth, our forward crew, sorry, Leafs fans, best forward crew in the NHL. And they showed it. They did. It wasn't Cole Perfetti, but Dominic puts it in. Dominic the donkey. Great goal. Okay, well, what more is there to say other than that? I mean, really, it doesn't make a ton of sense. I'm confused. I'm elated. I have all these emotions coming through my... I'm, I'm in a glass case of emotion right now. I'm in a glass case of emotion. Veteran team, I guess we'll leave you on the fact that Kyle Connor put an X on this game with, I feel like his 590th career empty net goal. Like seriously, KFC, the Birdman, that guy gets more empty net goals than anybody in the league. And that's great. I don't care how he gets them. I'm just thrilled he put it in. So Jets fans, if you're new to this channel, smash a subscribe, smash a like. We appreciate you being with us. Leafs Habs fans, we're covering the game tomorrow. Can't freaking wait for it. But Toronto, maybe we will see in the second round. I'm also going to drop a second video tonight where we break down some of the game clips. So take a look for that. We're going to drop this one right now to keep the video short. Go Jets, go baby. Go try and D.